Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff. Welcome to the Seattle Area Independent Schools Virtual College Fair. This afternoon, we'll be hearing from six universities and institutions, University of California, Santa Cruz, uh, St. Martin's University, uh, excuse me, the University of George Washington, University of Strathclyde, Colorado School of Mines, and then unfortunately, I'm totally forgetting one, Denson University, I apologize. Before we get started, our host would like to say a few words. Thank you, Jeff. My name is Nikki Danos, and I am the Director of College Counseling at Forest Ridge School in Bellevue. And before we turn things over to our college guests, I just wanted to thank you all for being here on a Sunday afternoon at the Seahawks opener. Um, and I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the Seattle Area Independent Schools, which include our friends in Tacoma, Annie Wright and Charles Wright, and all our friends in Seattle, Bush, the Downtown School, Eastside Prep, Forest Ridge, Lakeside, Northwest, Overlake, Seattle Academy, U Prep, and Rainier Scholars. One of the great joys about doing this complex job is to have such outstanding friends and colleagues in high schools and colleges. You were in excellent hands with your college counseling team at your school or at Rainier Scholars. So please trust them and listen to their advice about the college search and application process. Some of our college friends are with us in this room right now. And so I'm gonna turn it right over to them. Thank you. Thanks much, Nikki. Without further ado, I will turn it over to the University of California, Santa Cruz. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to kick things off. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so my name is Emily. I am an admissions rep here with the University of California, Santa Cruz, and I'm going to be sharing just a few minutes about what our campus is all about. So UC Santa Cruz is located in Santa Cruz, California. We are about an hour and a half south from San Francisco Bay Area and about five hours north from the LA area. We are situated in a redwood forest. Um, so when you're walking around campus, you see beautiful trees, like the ones here in my virtual, virtual background. Um, we literally back right up to a redwood forest and we also have beautiful views of the Monterey Bay. So it is a very beautiful place to spend your time as an undergrad. We are uh, closest airport is San Jose, so very easy to get to and from campus for those of you that would be coming from the Seattle area. One thing that's really cool about our campus is we sit on about 2000 acres of land. Um, that is about four and a half times the size of Disneyland. So the campus itself is huge um, and it's kind of spread out, uh, but only about 45% of our campus is actually developed, has buildings, has uh, dorms, places to eat. So what that means is you are walking through nature when you're walking from class to class um, or back to your dorm. We are uh, very close to Silicon Valley. So if you are a student that's interested in tech or startups, we are a great campus for you. It's just over the hill from us. Silicon Valley is about 45 minutes away and it really is our backyard. Um, in terms of the UC system, we are the second smallest campus in terms of student population. So we're about 20,000 students in the grand scheme of things. That means we're a, a mid-sized campus. Um, so you get sort of the tier one research experience, but on a mid-sized campus. Um, and I think that is a really great experience. Like I mentioned, we are a tier one research university. So across all of our divisions, we are doing research and our undergrads are very involved in research. Somewhere between 75 to 80% of students do research while they are an undergrad on our campus. We have a total of 69 majors and 40 minors on our campus. They span five academic disciplines. So we cover arts, humanities. Uh, we have a division of social sciences, physical and biological sciences, and our Jay Baskin School of Engineering, which houses about 11 majors. Most popular majors on campus are computer science, computer game design, which is very unique to our campus. We also have a film and digital medias program. Psychology and sociology tend to be very popular 
as well as, well as marine biology or our coastal sciences. We are a coastal campus, so that's a great place to study uh, marine biology. We also have pre-health major opportunities as well as pre-law and other professional programs. Um, you also have the opportunity to double major or major and minor. Our campus does um, have a very interdisciplinary focus, so that is definitely something you can do while on our campus. Next, I wanna talk about our residential college system. This is something that makes us pretty unique within the UC system. So we are one large university divided into 10 colleges. So as a student, all of our students are students of the University of California, Santa Cruz, and each of you will be affiliated with one of these 10 colleges. These are really living and learning spaces. They don't decide what classes you take, what major you are. Um, it's really a way to make our large university feel a little bit smaller. So I always like to describe them as neighborhoods. So you will be affiliated with one of these colleges. It's where you will have your dorms, likely your first year. You'll go to the dining hall, make friends, there's social activities, but you will take courses across the campus as a student. Next, I wanna transition into sort of student life, what there is to do on our campus. So we have over 200 clubs and organizations for students to choose from. These range from fun things like acapella, dance groups, uh, to career planning opportunities, as well as religious and lifestyle options. We are also a Division III NCAA sports campus. So if you're interested in playing at Division III level, we might be a really good campus for you. We do have men's tennis as well as women's volleyball. And then I wanna say probably about 10 other division three sports. We also have a ton of intramural and club sports for students to choose from. So we have the traditional intramural club sports like basketball, volleyball, um, but then we have some more unique ones. So I know we have Quidditch on our campus. Our ultimate Frisbee team is very popular. So there is a lot to do in terms of um, club and intramural sports. We also have a huge recreational department on campus. So if you're interested in hiking, biking, the outdoors, there is a ton to do within the city of Santa Cruz. And finally, I just want to leave you with our contact information. Uh, so please visit our admissions page. We have lots of virtual events going on throughout the fall, and you can also follow us on social media. Um, so please keep the conversation going, and I hope to hear from you beyond this presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate that very much. For those in attendance, don't forget you can ask questions at any point. Uh, there is a Q&A box below where you can type your questions and the admission reps can respond as they have time. Next up, we have the George Washington University. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, my friends. My name is Andrea Frangi, and I'm the Regional Director of Admission for the George Washington University. Um, I myself am based in the same Washington as you. I live in West Seattle um, and have worked at GW for just over four years. I'm very familiar with your high schools and will be visiting many of them, um, either virtually or in person over the next few weeks. So please be on the lookout for me. Um, so GW, for those of you who maybe aren't super familiar with us, um, is considered a mid-sized private research university. We have about 11,000 undergraduate students, which is great to know, but I think it's more important to talk about like, how does that manifest itself in my everyday in-class experience? Um, average class size at GW is about 29. Um, I think even more importantly, the largest class that we offer at GW is a first year economics class that tends to have about 200 students in it. That's definitely more than 29. Um, and so as you're navigating this process, talking to college reps, asking what the largest class is can be a really great way to go. We're definitely not a university where you're gonna be in an 800 person lecture hall, but know that you might have some larger classes um, that first or second year. 
That having been said, a full 50% of the undergraduate courses that we offer at GW have fewer than 20 students in them. So you are going to have an opportunity to interact in conversation, debate, and dialogue with those students who are coming from all 50 states and coming from all around the world. Um, our location is pretty unique. We are the largest university in Washington, D.C., located right downtown, four blocks away from the White House, across the street from the State Department, um, within walking distance of the National Mall, where GW students are the only ones in the country whose graduation ceremony is hosted on the National Mall. The Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts is a few short blocks away, and we have a metro stop on our campus, making things like the National Portrait Gallery, uh, the Capitol, very, very accessible to our students. Even though we're located in a major metropolitan center, we are a residential university requiring that students live on campus through their junior year. So you're gonna have guaranteed, <clears throat> required, uh, on-campus housing through junior year. A number of years ago, we purchased the Mount, what had been the Mount Vernon Women's College when it closed. We bought their 25-acre property three miles away um, from our Foggy Bottom campus. One third of our first year students reside on the Mount Vernon campus. Many of them are part of one of our special programs like our university honors program, politics and values, women's leadership, uh, civic house. So that can be a really great option for students who want to have a smaller residential community that first year at GW. Here is my slide of tiny text, um, but rather than getting super into the weeds with this, what I wanna focus on are the seven schools and colleges that are listed. When you apply to GW, you don't need to know what you wanna major in, but you will wanna indicate which of our seven schools or colleges you would like to be a part of, and you'll be admitted directly into one of those. The Columbian College of Arts and Sciences is our largest school. It has the most diversity of academic offerings. If you're looking for pre-med, that's probably the best fit for you. And if you're one of our many incoming students who's undecided, the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences is a great home for you. Um, Elliott School of International Affairs, definitely a popular option, especially being located across the street from the State Department. Journalism and political communication, as well as political science, also popular options. Again, right, our nation's capital, but very strong engineering and business programs as well. Um, student life, I, we want you to have a fulfilling academic experience. We also want you to have community, be active and involved and have fun. Over 540 student organizations at GW, um, everything from religiously affiliated student orgs to um, culturally based student organizations to the two largest clubs on our campus, which happen to be the politically affiliated student orgs on our campus. Um, we're a Division I athletic school with 19 sports played at the D1 level, like many, most universities. We also have club and intramural options, so if you're somebody who loves a team moment, but you don't want to play um, at the D1 level, lots of opportunities for involvement, and maybe you'll win a t-shirt. Um, just to wrap up here with our admission process, we are on the common application. We are a university that offers early decision and regular decisions. So no EA offered at GW. We've been test optional since 2015. The one exception to that is our seven year BAMD program, which this year once again is requiring either the SAT or ACT. But for everybody else, competitive um, admission and scholarship consideration will not require an SAT or ACT. And if you're applying to GW, know that I'll be the person who's reading your application. If you're interested in being considered for need-based financial aid, we will require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. And the application deadlines for those will be the same as your common application deadline. On the right side of your screen, you should see um, the information about applying to one of our special programs. So if the university honors program is of interest to you, definitely know um, that there are two additional writing components for that. My final slide is my contact information. Feel free to screenshot this um, or take a photo. And then I'll also drop my information in the chat. But thank you very much. I'll look forward to hopefully seeing many of you over the next uh, few weeks. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks, Andrea. Next up, we have Denson University. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin. I'm going to get my screen pulled up here. Great. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admission at Denison University, um, which is a small private liberal arts college in Granville, Ohio. 
All right, so where is Granville, Ohio? We are about 25, maybe about 35 minutes away from Columbus, Ohio, which is the capital. As you can see here, it's the 14th largest city in the state of Ohio, and it's a great, uh, great area. Uh, if you love the arts, there's a great art scene there. If you love sports, uh, professional sports, as well as the Ohio State is there. Sometimes people think it's funny that I mention Ohio State in my presentations, but what it really means is that Columbus is a city full of young people, and it's really um, just a great place to be a college student. Granville, though, um, is a small town. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it. Small, quaint town with restaurants um, and pretty much anything you need. And students at Denison really love that they get a very small town experience with access to a big city. So who are we at Denison and how do we teach? We are a campus of about 2,300 students. So we're quite a bit smaller than some of the other institutions here. Um, small enough that you're gonna walk around and really get to, you'll recognize people on campus, but definitely large enough that you can remain somewhat anonymous if that's important to you. We are 100% residential. So that means all students live on campus all four years. And that is a huge part of life at Denison, both in and outside of the classroom. So if you are looking for a school where people are going off campus and really not campus driven, this might not be the place for you. But if you're looking for a close knit, really supportive community, um, Denison might be really interesting. We have, um, you know, how we teach. So Denison is a really connection and relationship based campus. From the president down, people really know each other's names. And this is a place where people take care of one another. We have a lot of very traditional liberal arts programs at Denison, um, psychology, economics, English, all very popular. However, we also have some more unique, um, kind of more pre-professional and pragmatic focused programs at Denison, like global commerce, which is somewhat of an international business program, global health, journalism, data analytics, financial economics. Um, can you find those at other institutions? Absolutely. Can you find them all at institutions that are similar to Denison? Not really. Um, and so some of our programs, again, are something that students are really, really interested in. Um, you can see here nine to one student faculty ratio, over 250 off campus um, study programs, about 80% of our students have a global experience while they are at Denison. So if that's something that's really important to you, Denison could be a great place for you. Um, some other statistics here. So we have quite a big campus, um, not as big as some of the other amazing institutions here, but we have a great bio reserve that's about 350 acres. So if you are interested in the outdoors, um, lots of amazing trails there. Our campus um, is quite um, Sorry, it's quite diverse. Uh, less than 20% of the student body is from Ohio. So this is not a regional based campus. You can see here about 16% of our student body is international. We come from 46 states and 51 countries. So this is a place where you're gonna get to meet people who are similar to you, but also who are quite different. Um, and with, <coughs> excuse me, uh, with all the student organizations and clubs, you'll really get to know them both in and out of the classroom. So let me tell you a little bit about student life at Denison. There are over 160 different student organizations ranging in everything from political based groups to interest based groups and everything between. Um, if there's something you want to start and it's not at Denison, it's pretty easy to do that. We're a division three athletic program. About a third of the student body is a varsity athlete at Denison. And I would say that we are a small school with big school spirit because we tend to dominate in our league. And um, this is definitely a place where students show up for athletic events. So if you're an athlete, that might sound really great to you. Or if you're someone who just wants a little bit more of that spirit, that might sound great to you as well. Just as important as athletics at Denison are the arts. So just like I said, about a third of the student body is involved in athletics. Uh, at the varsity level, a third of the student body is involved in ensembles as well. So this is an institution, one of my favorite things about Denison, this is an institution where athletics and the arts are both really, really important. And I think that that creates somewhat of a unique uh, community and culture on our campus. A little bit about the admission process. We are on the Common App, the Coalition App, and the QuestBridge application. Um, we 
have early decision and regular decision. Early decision is November 15th deadline and regular decision is January 15th. Just like the George Washington University for financial aid, we require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. And we also offer merit aid to students um, with no additional application. We too are test optional and have been for over 10 years. So that is not something that has changed as a result of COVID. And we're going to read your application holistically. Um, there are optional interviews if that's something that interests you. And I will also be coming to Seattle in the next couple of weeks to many of your schools if you want to learn a little bit more about who we are as an institution. I'll leave you with this contact information here. And if you have any other um, questions, I will also put my email in the chat. Thanks so much and have a great one. Thanks much. Next up, let's keep going. We've got St. Martin's University. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Porter. I am one of the admissions counselor at St. Martin's University, um, home of the Saints. Um, St. Martin's is actually located in Lacey, Washington between uh, Portland, Oregon and um, Seattle, Washington. So it's a nice little fun trip for students that they can take over the, the weekends and just have a good time just to see what's around them when they wanna escape from school. It's also located with 380 acres of beautiful land for students just to explore and just see different walks of life and get to know different things, which is very um, nice for students. Olympia is right next to the Capitol, which is a good a resource for students when they want to um, interview at the Capitol, but or do internships or job opportunities. So that opens doors for all students and provide resources. Um, these are some of the programs that St. Martin's offers. Um, they're all listed right here. Some of the top programs or ones that most students are drawn to are our civil engineer and um, social work programs and nursing. We have um, grown over years and we continue to grow. So these are just important programs that we offer for all our students when they attend at St. Martin's. Uh, life on campus. St. Martin's has 40 plus clubs for students and continues to grow. We try to provide an environment where students, if they feel like they wanna create a new club or um, just resource, we want them to be able to do that. So we, um, have it free for students to create a club, whether that being a fun club like um, a Harry Potter club or maybe that being a Black Student Union or Hawaii club. We open those opportunities for our students. Um, we are 30% first generation and we continue to grow every year. Um, there is 26 faiths that we present on St. Martin's University. Um, you do not have to be Catholic because it is a Benedictine University for students, which is very nice that you do not have to have a religious background at all to be a part of this community. Sports and recreation. Uh, St. Martin's has 13 NWAC um, teams and continues every year to um, uh, meet these goals and grow as a university. Um, if you do not feel like you can compete in these um, sports or you don't feel comfortable, we also have intramurals for our students in the gym where you can just have your own team. You can play against your prof um, professors and the monks. And so it's a really cool space for students to get out and see different things. Um, if you want to attend sporting events, you have that opportunity also just to be a support of the other students and fans on the St. Martin's University community. Our campus housing. Um, in the Parsons Hall, we have four residential halls, but in the Parsons Hall, we have um, a, we like to say a little convenience store for you to get your essentials and your resources when sometimes you don't have that um, luxury of walking or a car. So we create that space for our students. We have a community kitchen for everybody in all the residential halls, which is very nice. So you can um, cook, you can get to um, know other students and you can get that community space when you're away from home. Um, we Every um, residential hall has a micro and mini fridge in the dorm rooms, which is very nice. Um, it provides that resource that you don't have to go out and buy one um, to make it more easier on our students. We like to give them that. 
Um, everybody loves scholarships and gift aid. Um, at St. Martin's, we try really hard to provide resources for our students so that they can attend there. Um, on top of merit scholarships and everybody um, getting a scholarship, we also have other outside resources like a washboard. And so we give them the little bit of hope that they can attend no matter the situation they may be in. I can take that personally. Three of my brothers and sisters did attend St. Martin's University. So it is possible if you really want to attend. Why St. Martin's? We have a 90% graduate placement rate. And what that means is after six months of graduation, you will be placed in either a job or you will be placed in a, a graduate program. So you have that little glimpse of hope that um, no matter what that you attend, you will be placed somewhere after all the hard work you have done at St. Martin's University. Um, the application checklist for first year students, uh, you can find at the St. Martin's University online, or we are also located on the Common App. Um, you just fill out all these things like free application, personal essay, high school transit, letter of recognition. We are a test optional um, university. So you do not have to um, submit your test scores if you do not feel comfortable doing that. Um, um, the office administration, these are all our contact lists. Um, you can contact any of them, but I will be the point of contact for Pierce County in uh, Washington State. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nicole. Next up, we have University of Strathclyde. Sorry, just a second. Hi there, my name is Shannon Hersage and I am from the University of Strathclyde, which is in Glasgow, Scotland in the UK. So probably your furthest located university this evening. Uh, we are an older university founded in 1796. So lots of history on the university campus, a mid-sized university of about 23,000 students and very diverse in terms of nationalities with students from a hundred different nations around the world. We were, evocate, we were, sorry, we were awarded UK University of the Year in 2019. This is the second time that we've won the award um, and we're the only UK university to have won this award twice. We are located right in the heart of the city center of Glasgow. Glasgow is Scotland's largest city and the fourth largest city in the UK. The campus itself is located just about a 10 minute walk from the two major train stations in the city and also the bus uh, station. And from the bus station or the train stations, you can pretty much travel to any place in the UK that you'd like to go. For example, London is about four hours by train and Edinburgh, which is Scotland's capital city is about 45 minutes by train. Uh, there's also very easy links to the airport with direct flights from Newark um, into Glasgow daily. The campus itself is quite contained. You can walk around the whole thing in about 15 minutes. So it very much is a campus within a city centre. That means that the library, your accommodation, the sports centre are all within an easy walking distance. Glasgow is on numerous different uh, lists nominated as one of the friendliest cities in the world. People will come up and chat to you all the time, especially when they hear that you're not from Glasgow. Your, your hardest challenge will be getting them to stop talking to you. They're very friendly. Uh, we have fantastic shopping and nightlife in the city, really excellent music gigs, uh, and we're a UNESCO city of music pretty much any kind of uh, music style that you want to hear, um, you can find in Glasgow. And we get lots of American bands every year as well. We've got fantastic sporting facilities both on the campus, but the city itself also hosted the Commonwealth Games and the European Championships. So we've just got excellent sporting facilities that now the, the whole city can access as well. A little map of our campus. Like I said, it's only about 15 minutes to walk around the whole campus. Queen Street Station and Central Station, there's two main train stations. And then George Square is very much the city uh, center. 
fantastic shopping, restaurants, cafes, pubs, theaters, you name it, can be found within easy walking distance of the campus. We've recently had lots of campus investment and continue to do so. So our sports center was renovated just uh, a couple of years ago. Really no excuse not to work out now. Um, fantastic facilities where actually some of the top basketball teams um, practice because the basketball courts are so good. A fantastic swimming pool, lots of machines and regular classes. And again, easy walking distance from all the student accommodation. The Technology and Innovation Center opened across the street, um, and this is a combination of research that's done by the university, working very much with industry, for, so a very exciting uh, building on campus. The library has been recently refurbished as well with great individual and also group working space. And then our learning and teaching building has just opened this month with a new student center um, and all the student support services going into that building as well. We've had long links with the US, including our founder, John Anderson, who used to accompany Benjamin Franklin when he came to visit Scotland. And we have about 100 US students studying across undergraduate, master's, PhD, and exchange levels. And a fun fact, the University of Strathclyde alumni, Scott Cooper, was the first Scottish-born player for the NFL. We've got four different faculties, so kind of areas of study um, at the undergraduate level, engineering, science, human, uh, sorry, humanities and social sciences, and the Strathclyde Business School. And then within these areas, lots of different degree programs. We have about 200 different degree programs on offer. For American students as well, you'll notice that within humanities and social sciences, there's a good level of choices within the first and the second year. The kind of advantage to coming to uh, do a Scottish degree is that you don't ever have to do any of that kind of core curriculum that you do in the US. So if you're studying business, for example, you can really just start studying your business classes from the very first year and focus on those subject areas. But you'll also have a chance to take ele elective subjects as well. And in Scotland, the degree program is four years, just like the US. To apply, you apply through UCAS, which is like the common application form. Um, it allows you to apply to up to five UK universities. Our prices are quite competitive in comparison to US universities, and we are FAFSA accredited. Uh, lots of different support services as you'd expect from a large university um, and you can find more about that on our website. Finally, I just wanted to give you uh, contact details for myself and my other colleagues working in uh, the American market. Thanks very much. Thank you, Shannon. Finally, we have uh, Colorado School of Mines. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me share my screen real fast. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Luke Contreras. I am an assistant director of admissions at Colorado School of Mines in beautiful Golden, Colorado. We are about 20 minutes northwest of downtown Denver. Now at Colorado School of Mines, we like to use the phrase, we love tradition, but we aren't traditional. And here's why. At Colorado School of Mines, we're a little niche. We're a little focused. We're a little nerdy, and we like that. At Colorado School of Mines, all of our degrees fall under the umbrella of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, as well as a really cool economics and business program. You'll find well-known STEM disciplines like mechanical engineering, civil engineering, computer science. You'll find really unique niche programs like quantitative biosciences, um, materials and metallurgical engineering. Uh, we just launched a brand new space and asteroid mining um, minor as well. So if you are into STEM and you believe that science, technology, engineering, and math is your jam, then Colorado School of Mines could be a great school for you. Um, we are about 5,200 undergrads. Um, I, like the, I think that's the perfect size. Not too, put, not too big, not too small, just right. We have over 500 clubs and, clubs and organizations that range from fraternities and sororities to pre-professional clubs that um, get you networked within the industry at a really, uh, from the moment you step foot on campus, lots of outdoor adventure clubs. Maybe that's part of the reason why uh, you're looking to study maybe at a state like Colorado. 
Um, and then lots of, you know, just for fun clubs, like an ice cream club, meditation club, and awesome esports tournaments clubs as well. Uh, we are an NCAA Division II school. Um, we are proud of our athletic tradition. Um, our football team is top 10 in the country right now. And last yesterday, beat a team 76 to nothing. Uh, so those engineers were putting points up on, those sco on that scoreboard uh, during the game. Now, at Mines, we love to use the phrase, uh, we do not build classroom engineers. We build real world engineers. And here's how we do that. Throughout your four years, you're going to be a part of something called the signature experiences. These are already preset, pre-built classes in your curriculum that will allow you to roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty. During your freshman year, you're gonna do something called cornerstone design, where you and a group of other first year students solve a real world engineering uh, problem posed by a real world uh, industry partner. Uh, for example, recent partners that they, we've worked with are the Colorado Department of Transportation and the Bureau of Land Management. And then as you develop into your degree, you'll be doing something called field session. It is an academic internship where you are focused in on your area of study. Um, some of these are two, three week long trips that are maybe uh, international, but that are in different parts of the United States. They're not all just here in Colorado. Uh, and then research opportunities, and as well as your four years at Mines will absolutely come together through what we call the capstone design project where it essentially is a final project that takes everything you've learned throughout your four-year journey at Mines and puts it into practice. Some of these have been um, entering national competitions with, the con with a concrete canoe, um, uh, converting a Volkswagen bus from gas to electric. Um, even our Formula SAE team that designs a Formula SAE car uh, competes on international competitions and is a senior design project for students in our mechanical engineering department. Now, when we look at a student that comes to Minds, we use something called the holistic review, which means we're gonna look at everything that defines who you are, the high school you went to, the classes you took in high school, the difficulty of the classes you took in high school, your involvement, right? What were you doing with your time in your community or outside of the classroom? We're gonna look at the strengths of the letter of recommendation that someone writes on your behalf, as well as the quality of the applic uh, application essays. As, as many of the other schools on today's panel are, we are test optional. I mean, I think if you ask any of us, the single greatest indicator for student success will always be your GPA, who you are on the daily basis versus who you are on a random Saturday at a, maybe a school not, a, not of your own and for a random three hour window could be very different, but who you are on the day to day is more of an accurate representation. So we are test optional, um, if that is something that you are curious about. There are two ways to apply to us. There is the golden app, which is the Minds specific application, as well as the common app, which is a way to um, apply to multiple schools on one document. Um, and then we have one deadline this year. If you are a senior, the deadline is November 1st. So six weeks from now, um, we, want, we want, want to make sure you apply to Colorado School of Minds. Um, and if you apply to us by, Col by November 1st, Colorado School of Minds guarantees you'll hear back from us no later than December 20th. One thing that I believe that minds uh, kind of sets minds apart is the opportunity to connect you to industry. The opportunity to really make sure that your name is going in front of some of the best of the best when it comes to STEM. If you look at some of these slides, you see some of these outcomes, right? Average starting salary for an alumni is $73,322. Um, we host two of the largest career fairs in the state of Colorado. But I think the biggest thing is it's that total return on investment. And once you combine the power of a minds education with the power of the students that come on our campus, you truly have great results. Thank you so much for logging on this uh, afternoon. Um, and uh, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jeff. Thanks so much, Luke. Well, I want to invite all of the admission representatives back on screen now. We've got a few minutes left before we wrap up. So I've asked each one of them to, um, give us an answer to a specific question. And the question is, what is the one thing you want us to remember about your institution? And it, there's no hold bar on this question. So we'll go in the order we presented. So we'll ask University of California, Santa Cruz to go first. Thanks, Jeff. What a hard question. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think one thing to remember about UC Santa Cruz 
is we are part of the UC family. So when you graduate, you have a very strong network of alum and our campus in particular was named one of the top 20 campuses to lend you a job in Silicon Valley. And we're a super friendly campus. So I hope that you um, check us out in your college search. Thanks, Emily. What about George Washington, Andrea? Yeah, Jeff, you really gave us the hardest question on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Um, for GW, I think I would say um, don't be intimidated by the fact that when you're filling out your common application, you'll need to indicate which of our seven schools or colleges you'd like to be a part of. We recognize that what you put on your application is unlikely to be the path that you end up in when you graduate, and that's totally fine. There's a lot of pathways for you to have creativity and fluidity between the schools, changing majors, changing schools. Um, we're not gonna hold you to what you put on a common application 10 minutes before it was due when you were 17, I promise. Very good. What about Denison? Yeah, um, thanks, Jeff. I think what I would encourage students to remember about Denison is that you know if you want a small, highly, re highly relational um, experience for your four college years, this is a great place to look. Um, and also that, that location that I talked about, so in a small town, but with access to a really fantastic city so close. Um, yeah, and if you have other questions, let me know. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Nicole, St. Martin's. Um, I think one thing St. Martin's really wants to be remembered by is community and how important that is for us and the aspect of community because you are away from home, we want another space to be as welcoming. And so we build a lot of our um, B vows, Benedict and values off of that community aspect and creating that space for all students to feel welcomed and just invited into a new space. Very good. And then Shannon, what about University of Strathclyde? I would say, you know, come have your outlander experience. You only live once. It's an opportunity to live in another country, another culture, get a fantastic education in a really excellent city and just meet some fantastic Scottish people in addition to other people from all over the world. Very good. And then Luke, wrap us up. What about Colorado School of Mines? Yeah, I think the one thing about Colorado School of Mines is we always try to be forward thinking. Um, so like this year, we launched the nation's largest fleet of autonomous electric shuttles. So we have these cool little shuttles moving around campus that drive people around campus as well as into Golden. And it's just kind of a cool way to see how some of the stuff that our students and alumni are doing in the doing post graduation are helping communities. And it's a fun way to get around campus at the same exact time. Very good. Well, I just want to take a moment to thank all of our representatives for spending their Sunday afternoon with us. Thank you to all those in attendance for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Certainly hope this has been enjoyable and informative for you. There are additional sessions you can sign up for. There will be a short survey. We'd appreciate you filling that out when we wrap up here. Outside of that, on behalf of StriveScan and the Seattle Independent Schools, thanks so much for joining. Have a great day, everybody. Go Seahawks.